What's going on, my dear and wonderful legendary friends? This is Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And also welcome to Friday, July 21st, 2023, the first day of the rest of your life. Let's make it the best day. This morning we have Gabby, and she is a determined single mother who is building and growing at an exceptional rate her brand new digital marketing business. Gabby, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, you're so welcome. Where are you calling in from? So I am from southern half of Wisconsin. Okay, okay. Packers fan in the house. You know it. Cheesehead. Go Pack Go. There you go. I know y'all are serious about your Packers up there. You, you and bet. Your and your cheese and your snow. Mm -hmm. Yep, we don't skimp out on any of those. So. No, you don't. You don't, my friend. So what has been lacking in your life and what led you to do this? What were you looking for when you found us? So back in January is when I first came across any sort of video that remotely went towards Legendary. And I just was in a predicament in my life that I just wanted to get ahead on a few things. I had some goals set up and I knew that I needed something that I could do at my own pace, my own time um, to be able to get me to that point financially. So that's when I uh, came across uh, Caroline Hanny's page and one of her TikToks. And I was like, screw it, I'm going for it. So that's where we all started. Nice. And when was that? January. January of this year. Yes. So you've really um, been here for a, and doing this for just over six months. Had you ever done anything like this before? Nope. Never. Never. What is or was your profession? So I were actually work in sales. So I'm an okay. outside sales rep for an agriculture company um, here. Sure. With so um, sales is something that I'm used to. So just taking it in a different direction and doing it online versus doing it in person. So, so how has that been? I mean, what are, what, what do you see and what do you like about doing marketing and sales online versus the way in which you've been doing them offline in your, in your, in your other career? Right. So the biggest difference I think for me is not being able to see the interaction, um, and not in a bad way, because when I work with individuals face to face, it can go good or it can go bad. So right. I almost enjoy it a little bit better being able to do it online versus doing it face to face. But I also miss the interaction, which is why I started doing the, uh, the TikTok lives mm. that have been really fun for me okay. and for the individuals that have in or been on them with me. So, okay. yeah. Nice. Nice. So what was it like for you as you were initially going through the 15 day challenge? I know that you have gone through our, our or enrolled in our blueprints as well. And you've you've really invested in yourself. And that shows, I mean, anybody who is investing in themselves and and which is a which is a unique and different concept for a lot of us as we start this. It's kind of like we've we we uh, are either providers or caregivers or do a lot for other people when it but when it comes to um, doing something for ourselves particularly upgrading our knowledge upgrading our skill sets right i mean not buying a car buying a watch buying a purse buying a new pair of shoes that's one thing um but but uh what was it like for you to make the decision to invest in yourself and begin going through our curriculum to be honest, when I got started and I met my advisor and really kind of saw what Legendary was all about, um, just the information that I got and, you know, and I've went through college, I've, I'm a graduate. So like to under, to go through that training, I got so much more from that training than I did in four years of college. So I thought that was, that's really what like enticed me to go ahead and go through with investing in myself with the blueprints yeah also on top of that i'm not tech savvy and i knew like after talking with my advisor like that was going to give me the tools to be successful i'm like well this is a hands down no-brainer for me so hmm. yeah so i Good think statement to say that you know i mean and it's not something that's foreign to me i i hear this a lot that you know I was underwhelmed by my 
my university education, especially for the price tag of it. And the fact that, by the way, folks, if you want talking points for the make money online niche, if you happen to be working in that niche, um, student loans are the only debt that's unforgivable inside of a, a bankruptcy in the United States of America. Yep. It's the only debt that is unforgivable yep. inside of a bankruptcy in the United States of America. And so not only um, are so many of us prospected at 18 years old with or earlier, we're, we're, we're groomed much earlier than that, though, to go to college, to go to university. And almost there's a blanket of shame if we don't. Right. There's a gray cloud that we kind of that's either put over us or we feel if we don't. I certainly felt it um, when I was a high school dropout. I, I was I was I uh, felt a lot of shame. Right. Um, but then we get on the Internet. Uh, the Internet has in, in knowledge and information has become a lot more accessible on the Internet over the last few years. Um, and you know, we enroll in a $7 course and it's like, holy shit, you know, I mean, what in God's name is going on here? You know, I think, I think I got scammed not by the $7 course, but by the $50,000, uh, loan debt. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and I don't ever want to downplay or minimize the work that people put in to get that college education, because it certainly was four years of showing up or six years or eight years of showing up and doing a lot of work. Um, but uh, that's a powerful statement that you make. Do you also run it that you made? Do you also run in and, and, and hear that same thing being shared from other people out there as well? Yes, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Um, uh, there's an individual close to me, and she is also went through Legendary's 15 day course, and she is also invested in herself. And it's been fun to co communicate with her in facts of like, she quit her job. Like mm. she focused on the health and uh, wellness niche and she's, you know, she's doing this oh, way more, way more than I am at this point, but like how it's just changed us. And she went through six years of college and she's, she just, it, she's as floored as I am that we can get this much knowledge from wow. this person and invest in, you know, the community that comes behind it. So it's just been, yeah. I'd love to know who that is. And, and you can email me or shout her out now. I'd love to invite her on the show to talk about her, her success, especially in, in a, in a unique niche like that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I would definitely send that to you. I'll make sure it's okay with her first. Before absolutely. We, before absolutely. We and, that she, and that she wants to, and yeah. that she wants to, you know, yeah. There's a lot of people, and, and, and she can share as much or as little um, as she wants. I mean, really, I, I I love to give people the recognition that they that they deserve as well when they go through. And I think that's one thing that's lacking in our education system is that committing to something and actually completing something, and then going out in the real world and getting results with it is is it's quite an accomplishment mm -hmm. um, to to finish things. Um, what's it been like for you to follow through with this? Um, there's gotta be things. I'm, I, I don't, I, I mean, I don't know your history, but there's gotta be things that you've oh, started yeah. and not followed through with in your life. Oh, yeah. Um, what's it, what's it felt like to, to start this and follow through with it and, and now be getting results with it? What has that done for your self-esteem? What has that done for your confidence? So when I started this and I was, Again, I know every situation, every person is different. So, like, I want to share that, too, because I've had a lot of individuals, you know, ask me, you know, how long did it take before you started making money? And I'm like, well, I am not the typical case here. Um, but I do want to say, like, when I did start, I started in January, went through the course. There was time frame where I didn't do anything. And then I start. I, I forced myself to start posting around Easter. And then it just kind of kept going. And then all of a sudden I had a video that went absolutely viral on TikTok. And that's what changed everything. And that's really all it takes. You know, people ask me, you know, how did it change? And I'm like, it just takes one video. So just don't give up, keep going. Um, but I will be honest with you, Dave, when I, this past month has been in my personal life has been extremely difficult. Um, mm. So I took a step back from creating content. Mm -hmm. um, and, 
you know, putting anything out there. Like I, I still continue to send out my emails and I still continue to respond back to individuals who message me. Yeah. Um, just the content stuff with as busy as I have been, it's just been difficult. Yeah. Um, to answer your question, like there have been a lot of ups and downs through my journey. Um, but knowing that what I do have out there is still continuing to reach people and to make, you know, to make me passive income mm -hmm. and to be able to help those individuals who reach out to me with questions. Yeah. So, you know, it's just been a roller coaster and I don't doubt that it's a it. coaster for the rest of the year. Well, so I, I wanted to immediately share with you that my journey has been a lot of ups and downs as well. Yeah. I mean, whether it be um, things, I mean, I've, I'm a recovering addict, so I've had a lot of things that I've had to work through and overcome. And I've, I've, I've gone to retreats and treatment centers and over my, you know, 14, 15 years of recovery. And, and then the last 10 or 11, 12 years of doing this, mm -hmm. but even this year I had a, um, and, and by the way, we all have relationships and finances are the most difficult thing in life. Mm -hmm. And so if anybody ever feels shame for having difficulty in your relationships or your finances, drop it. Just get rid of it. Just just know that we're all struggling through. And I'm not particularly talking to you, Gabby, but just yep. want to, you know, uh, validate everybody who who feels shame for um, or thinks that their journey is is. Um, is, is wrong or is not right. I mean, um, or they're doing it wrong. I see people all the time in our Facebook groups and stuff. They say, what am I doing wrong? You know, it's like, you're not doing anything wrong. You no. know, you're just, you're struggling through it. You're failing forward. Um, this year, my father spent 77 days in the hospital with open heart surgery and trying to get off a ventilator and, um, he's still recovering. He's finally back home. Thank God. But I was out of it. I was completely just overwhelmed with grief, thinking that I was going to lose my best friend, my father, um, and uh, almost did three or four times throughout that process. And uh, it was the first time in a very long time I had sleepless nights, anxiety throughout the night, had a hard time sleeping. Um, you know, so the the beauty of this is that as you said it's still if we set it up and when we do have the energy and time we put in that work um the beauty is is that it will carry us through those times and the business if set up properly the business will continue to run the videos will continue to get views i remember an affiliate um, and I can't track everybody's results when they're promoting other products or they're selling their own courses. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't have access to that data. I only yep. have access to our company data where, where people are affiliates of our company. And I remember a guy who was, was one of our first diamond affiliates way back. He had not posted a video. This was back before short form content which short form content really kind of took off during the pandemic, like around like 2020 was when it's 2019, 2020, it started to get really yep. hotter. 2021, it's just got crazy. But I remember back in 2018, 2019, this, this guy had a YouTube channel and hadn't posted a video in a year and was still driving a ton of traffic. Because as you said, if the content gets a lot of views and people watch it all the way through and people are showing YouTube or TikTok signs that, you know, uh, viewer behavior that the content is good, they'll continue to push it out. And I love what you said. You're only one video away, right? Yep. That's it's so true. It's so true. I say don't quit before the miracle happens, and that would be a great example of that, right? Yeah. The, the, you know, the, the miracle can be a, a video that goes viral. The miracle can also be something smaller. What are some smaller miracles that have happened that m some people might be overlooking? Uh, your first subscriber, for example. What was it like to get your first commission? What was it like, the, the simple steps, not the big explosive miracles? Yep. And forgive me, miracles, it's a, it's a figure of speech. So don't think that I'm trying to be, you know, religious here or, or even spiritual or woo-woo. 
for those of you who this is your first show. It's just a phrase that I use. But what were some of those smaller miracles that happened at the beginning of your business that some people might have a tendency to overlook, but you look back now and realize those were important stepping stones? Yeah. The biggest one, after I purchased the blueprints and I really sat down, I took like a, about a week and really like went into the blueprints and just step by step worked alongside my phone, my computer, and just the little things of like getting my domain name or getting my email set up or like pairing them together. You know, the email, the autoresponder with my ebook, you know, or finishing my ebook. Like oh, when I finished my ebook, this huge weight just went, oh. I'm like, I, that was, that was a big one. And that was just the littlest thing. Nobody knew about it, but it yeah. was just myself that like, okay, this was something that was on the list. You got it done so we can check that sucker off. Mm. Um, the first commission I made was the beginning of June. And I literally, like, I saw the email come through, like, you just earned a commission. And I, I sat here, I'm like, oh my God open my phone and it, you know, it's the whole $2 and I'm like, I don't care. It's $2. We started and now we're going to keep going forward. <laughs> I got a, I got a $2 uh, miracle story when I first got started. And by the way, uh, Andrea says, can, can any, can you apply these strategies or this system to your MLM business to generate sales leads and recruits? Yes, my friends, these are strategies and skills that can be applied to any business. And this is exactly how I got started down this rabbit hole of learning these skills was I was a failing MLMer. I was in the NFL, the No Friends Left Club, okay? I was, and I was a pro bowler too, MVP. Um, I, that's exactly how I started. I got on the internet and realized instead of talking to a bunch of my friends and family and trying to recruit Aunt Bertha and Uncle Mike, that I could actually put up videos on the internet that would be a tool that would do a perfect pitch every single time for me. And instead of handing out business cards, I could actually metaphorically get people's business card by asking them for their email so I could follow up with them because nine out of 10 people don't buy on the first exposure, right? Right. So these skills and strategies, this is something that I want everybody to understand can be applied to every single business. Um, I mean, even the oil and gas business, even the restaurant business, for God's sakes, if you're not building an email list, if you're not building a database of people to follow up with, that is the value of your business. That's the value of Facebook. That's the value of TikTok. That's the value of Twitter, right? Is that they have this huge database of people who even if those people stopped coming to the platform, they could email everybody and say, hey, we've got this brand new feature that everybody should come back and check out. And boom, all of a sudden, because you were able to contact those people and they gave you permission to do so, you're able to drive them back to your website. And that's the whole concept here. We're, we're, we're putting our offers and our value and ourselves in front of people over and over and over again by both emailing, over and over again, but also by consistently posting on social media and having those videos show up in their news feeds over and over and over again. How many videos of Caroline did you watch before you decided to take action? Quite a few, right? I'm pretty sure. I mean, from then to now, I bet you I've seen all of them. <laughs> there you go. I want to tell you my $2 miracle story. I was doing network marketing back in the day. This was way be this was my first one, my very first venture. And this was when I had just gotten clean. I got recruited from a guy on a job site. And um, I thought, you know what? I'm going to put my dad up uh, above me and I'm going to, I'm going to get him rich. I'm going to retire him in this MLM. So I'm going to put him above me in the quote unquote pyramid. Um, and, 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 and I, I say pyramid with, 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 with great compassion because as an MLM or it was, it was the question that I always hate to get from people, which is, is this one of those pyramid things? Right. 
By the way, friends, Legendary Marketer is not an MLM and does not have a multi-level structure, okay? It is a single affiliate program, and first and foremost, we're an education company, okay? So there's a big difference. But I was doing MLM at this time, and I got a physical check for putting my father above me for $2.50. And even though it wasn't even a stranger, right, or it wasn't even an actual customer, it was my father, getting that check mailed to me, and seeing my name on it for, even though I had put $800 to get into the damn thing, mm -hmm. seeing my name on that check just did something to me, man. Yeah. It changed. Yeah. It changed. It changed everything for me. And it made me hungry to get more of those and make that happen over and over again. And it literally lit a fire under my ass that has has that I've only stoked over the years. Surely it has burned out. As you said, over the years, it does. It becomes hot coals and you got to throw some gasoline on the fire. Yep. But that's what started it all. Um, thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, those small wins are, are really so important for us to embrace. They're, I feel like sometimes they're almost more important than the big ones because yeah. you can't have the big ones without having the little ones. So yeah. that's yeah. how I look at it. So give us some content tips. You started, you started actually marketing around Easter. You made your first commission in June. Um, what in the hell kept you going from April to June? Um, determination. Now I say that lightly because like I said, the whole roller coaster thing of life that I've been going through this year. Um, I was just in a good headspace. I had, Everything was going great with work, personal life. Um, the kiddo was doing great. And I was like, we're just going to commit, you know, at minimum two videos a day. I was doing anywhere from two to three videos a day. And um, I just kept cracking at it. Mm. The biggest thing that I would do, and I got this from the, you know, from using the blueprints was um, TikTok. Say that one more time. I used to, I was searching TikTok for, um, cause I knew TikTok was probably going to be my way to, if anything was going to go right, it would be on TikTok. Mm. Um, and I would just search affiliate marketing videos or high ticket affiliate marketing videos. And I would find the most viewed ones and I would put my, I do a very similar video, but to my own twist. Yep. And that's, that's really the key to my success was, and a lot of people were doing them, but I tried to make them very unique to me. Mm. Um, I had my, I had one of my dogs in one. I mean, it was I anything that would be stand to me versus copying, you know? Yeah. So that was the biggest thing. And I, and I've done some things, you know, very unique to me. And I've, you know, did a spinoff on certain things to put my own twist to it. But that's really, that's been the name of my game. Yeah, it's been the name of my game too. And the thing that I think's really given me an edge over the years is looking outside of the niche that I'm actually promoting something in or marketing something in. Yep. If I'm marketing a make money online or affiliate marketing course or something like that, you know, I don't want an algorithm full of other affiliate marketers because I'm just sim I I that's fine. Maybe I have an account that has just that so I can model and see what people are doing, but I need to be looking outside of that niche as well. I need to be looking in weird niches, like the dating niche, mm -hmm. the pickup niche, the relationship niche. I need to be looking in the weight loss niche. I need to be looking in, um, you know, other sub niches in the health niche, right? I need to be getting ideas from other places, which will give me even more of an advantage because now I'm bringing in something that's completely and totally unique that somebody in this niche may have never even seen, but I really didn't have to come up with an original idea. Now, the difference between copying and modeling is, well, it's very simple. Every artist gets inspiration. That's what they mean. I was, I got, my inspiration came from the beauty of this woman or my inspiration came from the beach. Well, what that means is that artist saw that woman and got an idea mm -hmm. or was at the beach and got an idea or decided to paint the beach. 
Um, musicians have done it over the years. The, 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 so many songs are simply samples of previous songs, but you can't copy the song. You have to take inspiration from the song. In some cases, you have to, to sample it and, and pay some sort of a, I don't actually know how that works. Yeah. But so many artists, so many musicians, so many businesses do you actually think that uh, Apple was the first one to come up with the iPad idea? They weren't. Microsoft came up with it first. Microsoft actually came up with the kind of pad idea first. And Apple just did a better job of marketing it. You walk into CVS or Walgreens, you've got your brand name, whatever the Band-Aid or whatever. And then you've got your Walgreens. Yeah. Now, they're just blatantly just disgusting about it. They don't even really try to to hide the fact that they're just copying things but it is how business works mm -hmm. many of us think and put pressure on ourselves that we have to come up with original ideas and my friends my dear friends there are no original ideas in life anymore no there's eight billion people on on this planet somebody's done it before you somebody's done it better before you somebody's going to do it better after you whether it was 100 years ago or 100 years in the future yep the more that we can come to terms with that and just embrace our own when you say my own twist say more about that give us an example to speak to people who wouldn't understand what you mean when you say that putting your own twist on another video so i had a video that or I, I had watched a few videos like people making duplicate accounts of my account and like then people message me so I have a, this is one that comes to my head and I've seen a lot of people give their own you know this is me this is whatever and you know um and maybe this isn't a good example but just like putting myself out there and being like hey if you receive a message from me asking for money, that's not me. And whoever that is, is not a good person. So another, another one, I saw a video, they were using their dog. So I went and picked up my little French bulldog and I said, come here, Ellie, we're doing a video together. She was not impressed by it, but she did it. Um, and just, you know, doing my own little twist that way or the one video that took off, um, it was the, the Amazon side hustle one that took off. And I, you know, I, I went through the steps and some individual, the video that I referred to, um, did not go into as much detail cause I got lost. So I decided to add more detail. Mm. Uh, so, um, you know, cause when I had questions, I'm like, I'm sure somebody else has the same exact question. So let's answer it. Mm. You know, so just to go through I, and adding more detail to videos versus just keeping it very broad. Um, and I've gotten a lot of great feedback from those individuals. Like you really walked us through it versus other people, you know, yeah. so that, that one makes me feel good. So yeah. I'm just going to it. That is such a great example. Um, you see something out there on the internet, you see a video and you, you just, it, it's, it, where is it lacking? What is yep. it missing? What details did they not include? Yep. Um, how could you make it more thorough? Um, you actually, when you do that, you make yourself look better and completely avoid that copy uh, label because, you know, in a sense, if you did it better, then people can only respect that and appreciate that. Right. right? And that's a lot of in, you know, when I read comments and, and stuff like this and they're, you know, thankful for that. Or then they give me inspiration for other ideas like, hey, can you yeah. do can you do this? Can you do that? So, you know, I have this list that I've created of mm -hmm. like all these comments like I need to do this, this and this and. God. It will come. I'm be patient. Like it. It'll come. But like, I just, when the comments give me ideas. So. And what about comments on other people's videos? Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. That's the other place that I think a lot of times we, we uh, are overlooking a gold mine there because, uh, you know, people are probably being vocal down in that comment thread about what they feel is not good about the video. 
yep. you know, or what they feel like it's missing. People often say that in passive aggressive terms or in sarcastic ways. Well, you can take that and translate that and use that as that's market research. I mean, yep. that's a great example of good market research. Yep. That's actually a really great. I never even thought of that, but that's another way to do it, too. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the easiest ways because when you're starting out, right, it's like you don't probably have a lot of comments. You don't have a lot of people who are giving you a lot of feedback. So you got to go into other people's comments. And if you don't know how to make it better, then if you read through the comments, a lot of times people will 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 complain or be complaining about the video in saying how they wish it would have included this yep. or but you didn't say this, but you didn't this. So, you know, you can read through the comments and interpret or translate what people are saying, even if they're being negative or sarcastic. Right. Absolutely. So um, what other what other content? tips what other things have you discovered that whether you discovered them out there whether it was a combination of going through the blueprints and or our other education and 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 then applying that and seeing what other tips do you have around creating content what have you learned that that you now know that you didn't know in the beginning and a lot of a lot of the learning has of course probably come from from um exper you know doing these experiments what other advice would you give yourself if you were on day one of marketing um consistency and i and i say that i don't want to say that like because like we talked about earlier you know life happens but i mean i think i would be and i know this and i've accepted this i would be a lot i think a lot further ahead if i would have been more consistent with posting videos and emails um, compared to some other individuals that I know that they're being consistent. Mm. Consistency. Um, I've noticed since, especially on like TikTok and Facebook and Instagram, um, especially TikTok, the longer videos right now are really what's popular. So for those out there looking for wise or what they need to long videos are really hot right now now why do you think that is i don't know to be honest with you i really think it's just people especially the side hustle you know whole thing going on um i think it's just people spending the time and like being more thorough yes so like when you have a minute video versus a three minute video you know, and you're going to go into detail and really show these people where they can start and pause and start and pause. You know, I think those are just, they've really just taken off for me. Um, and it's nice that TikTok, for example, has opened up that ability to be yeah. able to start posting longer videos. You can yeah. only say so much in 60 seconds. Yes. And I have a lot to say in 60 seconds. <laughs> right. It's hard. I mean, that's a craft. That's a skill to be able to condense. What is it? What What do you speak to that? How do you keep your videos punchy, short, moving along? What sort of tips and tricks do you use to say five minutes or 10 minutes worth of information in two or three minutes in even into 60 seconds. I mean, what are some tips that you would have or some strategies that you use to keep the video moving along and interesting? Mm. The biggest thing is the start and stop. Like I just don't run videos. Like there's a, okay, we're doing this part, this, okay. As quick. And sometimes I have to redo it four times to get it to where I need it to be. Mm -hmm. Um, and I love that with any platform that you're on, you're able to do that. Yeah. Um, just if I'm going off of, a making a, or going off as a reference or using a video as reference, I'll, okay, how did they do it? How can I, how can I condense, you know, and then maybe do a little back research, you know, on other similar videos and how people have just moved it right along, mm -hmm. but just more less words maybe more is the key word to less is more less is more so yeah. i try to just keep it very minimal very direct um i'm not sure if there's a, a how to or how to do that um but just keeping it okay you need to go here and then we're gonna go over here and then we're gonna do this and yeah keeping yeah. 
using jump cuts is what we've always called them mm -hmm. the older school marketers because back in uh before you could do this right inside of an app we used to have to do it in editing software you yeah. know like ScreenFlow or 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 something like that um iMovie whatever wherever you edited your videos and those became real popular on youtube um back before all TikTok and the short form video really took off you know the you know, you saw somebody who edit edited out all of the oohs and ahs and ums and even the even blank space between taking a breath and speaking the next sentence. And it was like catnip for viewers because as attention spans got shorter, mm -hmm. it, it 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 kept people engaged, similar to how when you're watching a movie or a show. Um, say on Netflix or something. And if you notice when you're watching a movie, there's a, there might be a scene. And if you count how many different angles there are inside of that scene and really paid attention to how many different, you know, when they cut to a different yep. cam camera angle, if you paid attention and counted how many times that is done inside of a single short scene, say for example take a three minute scene on a movie or a show especially these these shows nowadays on netflix your favorite show go and watch two or three minutes of a scene and and count how many times they cut to a different angle they do that because it keeps the attention of the viewer it's yep. it's a very simple d movie making or directing or editing um production strategy and it's as old as 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 cinema is in 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 life. It's not a new concept. If you were to, if you do look at some of the older and try to go and watch an older movie from, you know, the 40s or 50s or 60s, and watch how long they keep the camera on a single or even widescreen. Right? Remember, yeah. a lot of the sitcoms you would have a wide screen. And they would just not cut it or edit it. It's almost unbearable to watch that because yeah. we're so used to um, these fast jump cuts in shows nowadays. So where are you editing? Are you editing? And what is the process of creating and then repurposing content for you? Are you shooting and then editing and posting right on TikTok? And then downloading from TikTok, removing the TikTok app. T talk to us about your particular process. So if I'm going to sit down today and make a video um, and just make one or go off of a reference of one, um, I will, I'll do it all on the app. But there are times like TikTok, right? TikTok or Facebook or Instagram. I do a lot of it on TikTok because I found that to be the easiest for me. Mm. Um, but I have done it on Instagram and Facebook. Or I, you know, we're in life and we're out camping one weekend and I take a video of the hooligans in the lake because they're jumping off the floaty things in the lake and, you know, and I'll take videos of that and save them to my phone and um, I'll use that as just a soft video or where there's no speaking. There's just, yeah. you know, video there or, you know, there's a, I live out in the country. So a gorgeous sunset, you know, take a video of a gorgeous sunset. We just had 4th of July, had a bunch of firework videos because who doesn't do that? You know, so I do, I try to keep everything. So I'll do it, you know, and do it on my phone or I'll do it on the app. It just really depends on what I have, what I'm trying to go towards, what I'm trying to post about and and do that. So how are you um, dealing with if one of these platforms removes one of your videos? And what also have you learned about protecting your accounts? So TikTok, God, uh, TikTok, TikTok, I swear, doesn't like me. <laughs> I don't know why. And I, and I, I was having some issues with my, so I use system IO for my, my funnels and I was having some issues with that for a while. 
where it wasn't sending individuals my ebook and we were just having a whole slew of issues. So I was getting reported quite a bit because I thought it was spam. Mm. So my account on TikTok is being watched, you know, which is not TikTok's fault. It's just technology is difficult sometimes. Mm. Um, I, I have a hard time understanding because I've had a couple videos removed. Yeah. And I have a hard time understanding why seeing I see other what, let me just give you an immediate tip on your landing page. There's no privacy policy. And one of the big things that everybody needs to have is a privacy poly policy on their landing page. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is, is because you need to disclose what you're doing with people's information. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if a, if a, if a platform goes and looks at your landing page, now they won't approve an advertisement on a um on on the platform so for example facebook if you're running facebook ads and you don't have a proper privacy policy um they won't approve your ads because you have to disclose what you are doing with people's information and if they can unsubscribe and opt out from that you also yeah. need to disclose if you're selling people's information and if you have a basic inside of the blueprints we, we have um, some resources that we point people to, to, to build a privacy policy. Um, I'll give you those resources right here though. You can just um, Google uh, Shopify privacy policy generator. Just Google that and you can have a privacy policy just spit out for you, a generic okay. one. And then you need to have that link down somewhere where it's visible and, 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 and able and easily clickable, okay? And it needs yep. to work. I would recommend it opens up into a new page, okay? We, we opens in a new tab. You can always choose on your funnel page builder if you want it to open in a new tab or if you want it to just, if you click the link, you want that tab to go to that page. But my friends and you, Gabby, you need to have that privacy policy link. And that's one of the biggest ways that um, is going to get your account flagged or potentially have a platform deplatform you or uh, forget what other well, forget what users are saying or doing. Right. Because in some ways we can't particularly control that. Right. How these platforms work at such a scale is if people are reporting their content they're either just going to have a, a robot that automatically freezes your account, uh, even deplatforms you and disables your account. But in most cases, it's going to be under manual review. And somebody from there is going to come and look at what you're doing. And they're going to look at your where your link goes to. And they're going to look for just a couple of different things. Are you making income claims without that that are unbelievable or that seem scammy or or spammy and do you have proper disclosures particularly privacy policy that uh that that offers transparency about what you're doing with people's information is that helpful gabby yep, it is i would not have thought of it because i do have the disclaimer because that was the big one mm -hmm. uh, but i didn't even think about privacy policy on you know when they click on my link to get my free ebook so yeah. well put it all even your even your income disclaimer put you know you can link out to that on a separate page down at the bottom of your of your um of your landing page you know you need to have all that information accessible right there on that page not on the bridge page that that, that people can't opt in people don't don't can't be forced to opt in to then see that there's a disclaimer or get the information about what you're doing or what you know your privacy policy or your income disclosure it needs to be if everybody wants to be extra safe to both protect their accounts but also to offer transparency to people all that information needs to be right there on your landing page either easily accessible through a link down at the bottom um, and and open into a new page which is what I've always done. You know, you've got you've got your income disclaimer, you've got your privacy policy, and you just add them as big, large links down at the bottom. Now, you don't want them to be tiny because another, you know, compliance thing that a lot of these platforms are looking at is, 
Are your disclaimers or your links out to your disclaimers tiny and unreadable and unfindable, right? So it's okay if you put them down at the bottom of your page, but but just make sure that they're in the same size font as the other text on your page. Right. That's good to know. Yeah. For me. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is this is part of the learning process and it's um it's uh, uh it's really a simple thing and it's really a, it's it's also a very you know it's 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 the last thing that us marketers and sales people are kind of thinking about because it's the le it's the boring stuff, right? But it's what the platforms are looking for. They don't know what the hell you're talking about. And honestly, they don't care what you're talking about in your videos as long as it you're not hurting people, deceiving people, doing anything that's deceptive and they view um, you know, ask I mean it's a privacy thing, you know, there's been so much attention to how our data is used, meaning how our name, how our email, how our all the other information that these that we give these platforms or these platforms learn about us when we approve different apps and we let we we let Google connect with Facebook. I mean, that's what they're doing. They're harvesting data. They're harvesting all of our information so they can then advertise to us what they think we want or what we're looking for. Yeah. Um, in for their advertisers and we really are considered advertisers on these platforms even though we're not paying for ads we're still considered advertisers yep. so that that compliance does trickle down to us and it's the platform's responsibility to hold its advertisers accountable to their those those same compliance standards that they're being held to does that make sense yes yes it does so what advice would you give yourself besides what all the other amazing value that you've you've offered today and things that you've brought up that have sparked interesting thoughts and feedback from me as well? What other advice would you give yourself that you know now that you needed to hear when you first got started? Uh, this one, right, with, right? The comment you just made earlier, <laughs> the privacy policy. I, I guess I did know about it, but it's just a matter of, like you said, it's not the fascinating part of all of this and it's not right. the all of it. So um, just really going into, you know, that kind of detail. And now that I do think about it, it is in the blueprints and in the compliance section. Yes. So um, the that boring section, the boring section. <laughs> um, so I think for me is if I could go back to January, knowing where I am now, like, don't wait. Mm. it's the biggest one just don't like and i'm i i say this and i i'm disclaiming like you know i i have made i've made my money back and then some to be on my way to where i want to financially be here within by the end of the year and i just i wish i would have really stuck to my guns and started this sooner to be further along than where I am. But I'm also very thankful for the process that I've done. Mm. So if I could go back and, you know, be any sort of inspiration for anybody watching is don't wait, keep, just go get on there, get it done, get started. Don't wait, start posting. Mm. I, I, I wait. I think the reason I waited a long time to post is because I'm, I'm, a little bit of a perfectionist and I want everything set up and ready to go before, you Join know, the club. don't wait, just, just start posting. Join so club. all you perfectionists out there, I know. Get, <laughs> get to it because you know what, there's nothing that is uh, going to be perfect anyways. And your imperfect content, your imperfect marketing is, will always do better than something that appears to be perfect. Yeah. Uh, if you're trying too hard, like anything in life, it will be visible and it's not attractive. Yep. And I just, I think I, that's why I love getting the feedback that I do. Like I've had so many people comment or message me, like, you just seem so real. Like screw the filters, screw the making sure my hair is done. I mean, this is what I look like majority of the time. So this is what you guys are going to get. You know, I, I don't hide much. 
Mm. My life is chaotic, just like everybody else's. Yeah. Perfect. So nor is my content going to be perfect. So my business personally and my brand individually and our brand here at Legendary took off when I stopped trying to be perfect or, uh, you know, be something that I wasn't. Um, and that's been an ever evolving journey for me as well. I mean, as I've gotten older, I care a little bit less too. You know, you get, you, you have kids, you got young ones, you're, you know, basically scrambling. Uh, this week, my, I've been alone with my two-year-old son, uh, because my, my wife and nanny have been sick, um, with COVID. Um, they're okay and they're getting better. But let me tell you something. I mean, I just ran my ass here from dropping him off at camp and, and I'm going to have to leave here in 45 minutes and go pick him up. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's real life stuff. I mean, and I don't ever want to stop doing that. You know, I mean, I didn't get into this because I want to escape my life. I got in this to this because I want to live my life more freely. I want to live my life more authentically. I want to live my life um, by, I just want to pick a shirt up off the ground and just put it on. I, I don't want to, and just wear a hat and I have to comb my hair in the morning. And I just want to, um, you know, I just want to, uh, I want to be able to pick my son up. I love the flexibility. I love the, uh, I love the fact that even though it was one of the hardest times of my life, I was able to go and be with my father every day at the hospital for the at least the 50 something days that he was unconscious, right. On a freaking ventilator and couldn't speak for himself. You know, I was his advocate and basically the person that was there both waiting for him to wake up and encouraging him, but also speaking to the doctors and nurses. And that was a blessing. You know, that was what the 10 years of work in this business, ha you know, has done for me. You know, you, you, you can, you can obviously, you can obviously, uh, uh, say that money is, is, is the ultimate payoff. And, but you know what the, it's what the money gives you. It's what the money does for you. Yep. I mean, I don't give a shit about money. It's stupid paper. And quite frankly, it's all a scam. They're printing more of it. I, I think it's a big pyramid scheme, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's the rules of life. I was born into this world. I didn't, I didn't ask, you know, for, I just, I just, realized I got to play the game. I got to play the game. And the, this, this world is based around you being able to make, make money. And there's a huge wealth divide, not only in America, but also in other countries around the world where it's, you're not a better person because you have money. You're not a more worthy person. Um, and so often we, if we're poor or we're broke, we think that we're not like equal. We think that we're less than, and that's bullshit. I found out that's absolute total bullshit um, that that there's shitty people with tons of money mm -hmm. and there's great people with that are broke, can't afford to pay attention. Uh, my father was one of them. I watched him be poor his whole my whole life. Right. Yep. Um, but he was a hardworking man, taught me a lot of values and taught me a lot of skill sets. Um, but money gives you the ability to be more of the person that you already are. And if you want to spend more time with your kids, if you want to be able to be there for family members and be, there's been so many things I've been able to do that I'll never talk about in my marketing or anything. I talk about a few things, but have just been, you know, elements of fulfillment for me. It's where I get my fulfillment from. It's not seeing, a, a you know, another million or another hundred thousand or whatever it is. At a certain point, those numbers in your bank account, you can't, unless you're buying private planes and Rolls Royces every day, you can't spend, I don't need a lot of ton of money in life. I mean, I really don't no. I need to be able to put gas in my boat. I need to be able to wear, have a nice watch on my wrist. I need to be able to have a nice safe home. I need to be able to eat healthy food. Um, and, 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 you know, I like a beach house. I mean, I'm not saying that I don't like uh, some of the things that I have, but, I don't need a lot. We don't need a lot to be happy. It's th this is about the freedom. And I know for you, you had mentioned in your questionnaire, your why, what is that? My why. Uh, so just a brief synopsis. So I grew up, my dad had Lou Gehrig's disease. So mm. uh, that's ALS. If people, yeah, don't. my aunt had that. My aunt had that. Wow. 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 Yeah. yeah. Uh, my sister and I, we, you know, grew up watching, watching that 
you know, my dad was diagnosed in early 2000 and he passed away in 08. And it really gave you, especially my sister and I, an outlook on life very young age. And God bless my mom and my mom's family. Um, and what I have learned in all of these years um, is life is too short. My why is I, I want to spend time with the people that I love. I don't want to have to worry about, oh, I need to go see these farms today and I got to go do this and I got to do that. And I just, you know, now money's an issue and I don't have money to go do the things that I want to do with my kiddo because that's all we want to do as parents Yeah, is to provide a better life than what we had. So I want, you know, to do all those things and my hope and my desire and my why is her, my daughter. Mm. And just to be able to not have to worry about, not have to be able to worry about the finances. Like if we want to go to Disney, let's go. Mm. If we want to go to the lake, let's go. You know, to go do all of those things because life is, life can change very quickly. It really can. My my aunt was diagnosed with ALS and whew, healthy, wonderful woman in yep. her 50s. And and um, just she was also had passed away. Uh, just a, a very difficult, difficult process to, mm-hmm. to her to her passing. And um, it can be that it can. I was I was talking to somebody who was telling me a story about a a huge firm law firm owner who was walking on the beach with his wife had one of the biggest practices in, in, in the state and, and just dropped dead walking on the beach with his wife. Yep. Like, Holy shit, you know? Um, and certainly there's ways to prevent that. I mean, having adequate medical care comes down to your financial status and your ability yep. to be able to pay for the damn insurance. Yeah. Thank God my father is a veteran. Uh, he had a $1.7 million medical bill from just one of the hospitals that he was in during his open heart surgery. Yep. Uh, so even getting adequate health care to prevent or then get treatment during a medical tragedy is it it's boils a, down to finances. That's all it comes down to is money. Yeah. It's not like, it's not like you're more worthy or you deserve it more than somebody else or anything like that. It's like you walk in and if you can pay or if you have insurance, you get the service. And if you don't, you don't. Yep. And you, and you have to live your life like in fear and or avoidance, right? And and it, with your head in the sand, and that's just not uh, that's not the life that I'm choosing today. I have experience living my life like that. Yep. And that's a horrible, uh, scary way to live. And um, thank you for sharing that. That that brought back some memories for me as well, and reminded me how precious life is. You know, and it's and and like I said, you know, I my advisor. You know, we had this exact same conversation when, you know, we, when I was starting to set up and do the challenge and he asked me the same question as the why. And, you know, I told him and he goes, you know, that, that just hits home and brings it, brings it all the way home for you. So I just, I don't want to, I don't want to be a millionaire. I don't want to be, but I I would love to make this a full-time thing and just live life because you only get one. So Well, you're well on your way. You're well on your way. You keep up the great work and, uh, you know, come back and keep me posted on your wonderful, inspirational journey, Gabby, and uh, stay legendary, my friend. Thank you. You too. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. All right, my friends, you can follow Gabby at Come Affiliate with Gabby, spelled exactly how it sounds. Come Affiliate with Gabby, and Gabby is spelled G-A-B-B-Y. Go out like her pages on Instagram and TikTok, give her some support. As she said, she's got, you know, 200 and something thousand, almost 300,000 followers on TikTok, but uh, get out there and support her, lift her up, comment on her videos, like her videos. Um, We all need support. We all need to continue to lift each other up um, and learn from each other 
and simultaneously we're building our tribes, our support networks, and uh, just getting connected to the people who kind of understand what we're doing uh, in this journey that we're on and why we're doing it, even if your friends and family don't understand it. And that's okay. That's very normal. All right, my friends, uh, have a fantastic Friday, a great weekend. Stay legendary, and we'll see you back here on Monday for another episode. Bye-bye. Peace.